Now in this last video of the series, we're going to have a overall or fundamental look at validating the effectiveness of your hire. And what that means is if you hired people, uh, you can say, it's very easy to say, okay, I've done my job. But remember, you've committed a lot of energy, a lot of resources and money to recruiting and selecting the right candidate that your money can, can buy. Why would you just let it go at that? Wouldn't you want to follow up through performance management or performance measures, maybe three months, six months, a year down the line to see how effective that candidate was and then connect that to maybe the source of the applicant. So in our data, I'm going to choose some specific jobs called resident and I created a column called source. Now, if you go down, the sources of my residents for cardiology are here. We're going to use that in a minute. But let's look at performance measures. Out of this data, what do we have that can tell us how well the person did? Okay, let's scroll over to the right. We can use measures like absent days, right? So obviously that's a performance measure. How often are you absent? Uh, uh, sick days, I'm not sure we want to use, but current performance rating for sure. So our current performance rating is on a scale of one to five. Five is high, one is low, and it's completely suited and relevant to the job. That's what our performance system does. Uh, we won't look at previous rating, but look at this. We have malpractice incidents, that will be for medical staff, a number of incidents, and also patient complaint rating, or PCR. Um, if a medical person had excessive number of patient complaints, the code would be three, uh, low complaints would be zero, one, or two. So let's have a look. Let's start a fresh pivot. And here's how I want to look at it. Okay, so let's see. First of all, I want to know the source. So I'm going to take source and put it in rows. And these are all the sources where we could have got all the applicants ever hired in our organization. But we only want to look at a specific job. So I'm going to take job title, put it in filters up here and let's take a look let's select only residents there we go let's do resident of cardiology and a resident is between an intern and a full doctor okay so we're only going to do resident cardiology at all of the sites so these are the agencies or the universities where we could have hired our residents from now let's take a look at the number of, well, not that, well, you can look at the number of people by putting staff name here, the number of people we recruited. University A and med agent is the most uh, used agency or source. So let's take count of staff out. We want to look at our first performance measure, which is current PR. That's performance rating. Okay, let's put that in there. So that adds up all the performance ratings for everybody who was ever hired from one of these sources. Uh, you can't add up ratings, of course. So you're going to right-click on the number, value field settings, and average. And again, if you're not sure about any of this, please refer to the Pivot tutorial videos. So on average, these are my performance ratings. Now let me just fix up the numbers here. Okay, we can go two decimals. Okay. Uh, let's see. The strongest performers are from Med Agent and University AB. Okay, so I mean, just on the surface, on the weakest side, if you're ever going to hire a resident cardiology, go to MedAgent. But remember, there's costs associated with that, right? They cost money. The weakest ones, I think we're getting from IntMed and University C. So maybe in the future, only go to those sources if absolutely needed. Now, that would be performance rating. Let's look at another one. Let's look at uh, absent days, okay? Who tends to be more absent? Not that I could connect absenteeism rate to source. The quality of the candidate, maybe, maybe I can, but maybe not. It could be um, a cultural attitude towards work, for example, the, the culture of work. Uh, you might generalize and say people in Ontario might have a more relaxed attitude towards income leisure indifference which means would you prefer leisure more than income so people might tend to be more more absent or not that requires a lot of study okay well let's just see if we can do this absent days we'll average it out and sometimes we can do this just to validate okay so on average 
people from med agent have the highest number of absent rate uh, days per year. Okay, the lowest come from University B. Now, again, you make that connection yourself, what that might or might not be. So let's remove that. Let's look at PCR, patient complaint rating. That is way more suitable. Let's see. Put that in values. And again, we're going to average these out, okay? Average. So patient complaint ratings. Wow. I'm getting two out of three rating from uh, applicants or candidates from University B. I'm getting the lowest from University C and reasonably low from University A. So all indicators are that if you're going to go to any source in the future for the most effective candidates, uh, med agent and University A are consistently valid. They have the highest performance ratings and also the lowest PCR. Now, I'm not sure if MPI, malpraxit, practice incidents would help, but let's take a look. It might serve simply to validate further, okay? Oh, wow, this is not good. The lowest is University B, but look at med agent. These are the highest. Now, again, what connection would you make? Uh, I don't think we in this course are equipped for that. We're not medical professionals. However, you can easily bring on board the chief of surgery or their staff or, your, or some of your legal staff to have a discussion. Uh, the number will simply lead you to some sort of a discussion. Now, remember, you can break this down by people they report to, by location. There's a number of ways you can do this. Okay? Okay.